Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Hey, it's John Nemo. So excited that you are back on another episode joining me. And I'm all jacked up. I'm all hopped up because I've been reading. (laughs) Who knew my mom and dad were right when I was a kid playing Nintendo in the basement in 1989 and we had floor to ceiling bookshelves and all these books. And my mom and dad was, my mom and dad were both English teachers. So obviously they were biased, but they were like, why don't you read a book? Why don't you read a book? And my mom would come home with stacks of books from the library. And I always be like, ah, whatever. I got to play Super Mario or Zelda. (laughs) Now I get it. And what I mean is, when you run your own business, when you do your own thing, obviously, or just when you have a job, you have a life, you exist, right? You work professionally. When you start your day with reading, it's like jump-starting um, your car engine. It's like having a dead battery in your car and jolting electricity into your brain. And what happens is when you read a really good book, especially, obviously, you know, business-related, self-improvement, mindset, sales, content, marketing, customer service, anything, right, processes, systems, it, it, it just sparks all these ideas. It's like spark is the key word. It jolts your brain. You start taking notes. You get excited. You start thinking of how to implement those ideas in your business, in your situation. And then in my case, often what I do is I start creating content. And that's what I'm doing right here, right? It actually started with um, a line. To, I'll give you an example of this and then where it all led to, right? So I, st- I was poking around um, and somebody suggested a book on Twitter by this guy, Derek Sievers. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember him. He had, the backstory to Derek Sievers was um, he had started a company called CD Baby back in the 90s, like early internet days. And it was basically um, helping, helping independent musicians sell their music through CDs, right? And you could go to cdbaby.com and like find random independent musicians and listen to samples of their songs and then order CDs and they would mail you CDs from his garage. And so like this was pre-iTunes, pre-iPhone, pre-Napster, pre-everything. And so he was really at the cutting edge of like, hey, let's get a community of people that want to find each other and connect them online and they can exchange you know, information and and share value and share music. And so, you know, he obviously, I think he eventually sold CD Baby for like a gajillion dollars. I can't remember who bought it. Um, Somebody bought it, somebody big, but, but he's written a bunch of books about lifestyle and entrepreneurship. And somebody was mentioning one of his books recently. And so I picked it up and the line that got me going was he was just talking about sales. And he said, you know, the smart choice is sales. He says, it will always be valuable. Learn to sell and you can go anywhere. You'll be paid well at any age. You'll always be in high demand. And that really, really resonated with me because I remember years ago when I was struggling with my business, revenue roller coaster up and down, launched a new product, it flopped, like just, you know, the typical stuff entrepreneurs go through. My business coach at the time said to me, he's like, I'm not worried about you. I'm like, why? I'm worried about me. And he goes, dude, you can sell. He goes, you're always going to be able to feed your family because you can sell. That is like a life skill that you're never going to be hungry. And he saw something in me uh, with my sales ability that I didn't see at the time. And that, but that really lit a fire in me to be like, okay, well, if he believes it's true, I must be good at sales. Like, I mean, obviously to that point, I had some success. I was running a business. I was making sales, but I really dove in deep and really started studying and learning sales. And so I went in and again, just reading that little line from the Derek Sievers book today jolted all these memories and jolted all these ideas and like, oh yeah. And so I went and posted in the Facebook group I'm in where I, with my business coach who I've had for gosh, over a decade about, hey, I'm so fired up reading this morning, this line about sales and talked about in my own experience. Um, you know, my line that I live by <laughs> with my business is sales solves everything, right? More revenue boy, sure solves a lot of problems, right? (laughs) Puts out a lot of fires, buys a lot of time, builds a lot of runway, you know, softens a lot of crash landings when you have a lot of sales and revenue. You can figure it out, right? Because you've got money, you've got, you know, padding, you've got time, you've got revenue, you can hire more people, you can put money into solutions. So sales does solve everything in many cases. And so 
I, I got all fired up and posted in the Facebook group. And then somebody wrote back, and, and then this fired up more content. This person wrote back, and she's a business coach. She's like, oh, man, I just hate selling. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I just want to coach people and help people. I need a lobotomy. And so then I'm like, blah, <laughs> and I went crazy with all these replies. Uh, and then I'm like, man, this is this is so much insight. And you know, rather than just sharing it with one person in a Facebook group, why don't I make this a podcast? Because I know... This is a core challenge for so many people, you know, maybe even you listening, right? Like it's this whole facet of sales of mindset. And I'm talking about the mindset of how to approach sales. Most people, right, when they think of sales is it's a dirty word. <laughs> it's like sales is bad, right? Used car salesman, pressure, pitching, sold to, and I have to go do that. And it's like, what I said to this person was, this coach was, I said, you got to flip the script. You got to flip how you personally view sales. And what I mean by that is, and it's not, some people will be like, well, that's just kind of, you know, you're playing mind tricks on yourself. And I'm like, you're not, right? You've got to view sales um, not as I just want to take money and swindle someone and pressure them. And because remember, if you're legitimately a good person and you're legitimately bringing someone value, removing a pain, solving a problem, you should be compensated for that. I don't get to go to the dentist today and say, hey, um, can you look in my mouth and look at my teeth and um, I have a cavity that's really hurting. Could you take that cavity out? And then depending on how the rest of my day goes and if, if I feel good about things, could I maybe pay you later just depending on how successful I am with the rest of my oral hygiene this month? Like, no, right? Like you go into the dentist, you say, I'm in pain. I have a cavity, here is money, please provide a service to take away my pain, right? And I think where coaches and consultants get tripped up is so much of what you're sharing is knowledge and so much of what you're sharing is not like a traditional like transactional product that people want it for free or they want to pick your brain or you feel guilty, right? You feel like, well, I just, it's your own self-esteem or self-image. Like I just feel guilty charging that much and that's not worth it. And it's like, You've got to flip the script and say a couple of things. One is your time is limited. Your ability to impact people is limited. You can't do, you can't just help everyone for free every day and then feed your kids, right? Or have a successful business or achieve your goals, by the way. Like you have goals too, right? You have financial goals, life goals, family goals. And also your expertise, your value is worth money, right? Just because you don't take people's cavities out doesn't mean you shouldn't get paid for the expertise or knowledge or service you provide, even if it's something like business coaching or training or whatever, right? Remember, uh, my business coach taught me this a long time ago. He said, you know, when you're talking about sales conversations, price is only an issue in the absence of value, right? If people see value in what you're doing, they'll give you money, right? <laughs> like, why do we use food delivery? Why do I use grocery delivery, right? Why do I tip people and give people money? Why do I pay more than I would at the store? Uh, here's a perfect example. Instead of me going to the grocery store and you know spending an hour going up and down the aisle and putting the food in the cart and getting the best prices and then driving it home and unloading my car, I pay someone to do it, right? I use the grocery delivery and they bring it to your door and drop it off and you tip them and you pay more for the milk than you would if you just bought it at the store because the app you're using, right? They're going to take a cut and mark everything up. Why am I doing that? You know, that doesn't make sense because I value my time. I am paying them to save me one to two hours of time. And so I'm thinking I'm going to pay whatever it is, 2%, 5% more for my groceries than I normally would, but I get them delivered to my door and I save one to two hours and time is money, right? That's one to two hours I can use to work on my business, to make sales calls, to, you know, sell a product. And chances are very good that I can, you know, make more money in those two hours I saved than the little bit extra I paid to have the groceries delivered. So again, I'll pay for that. If my tooth hurts, I'm not going to go and haggle with the dentist and say, well, what's your rate for pulling cavities? And, you know, can I see some testimonials of other cavities you've pulled? I'm in pain. I want it solved. You, you know, you can solve it. Here's my, take my money, right? So I think that's how you have to approach it is people will pay you to remove their pain, to achieve their goals, and to realize a benefit. Your job, whatever it is that you do, whether it's products or services, you have to make clear what that is. Like, I help people remove this pain, achieve this benefit, 
achieve this goal, realize this outcome by providing this service. If you do that, people will pay you because they want that to be done. And the other big piece that I I got into in the Facebook comments with this person, coach uh, and consultant type was, look, like you, you're going to have, if your real driving passion as a coach or consultant is, I really thrive on helping people. I thrive, like my jam, my juice is seeing people take my advice and implement it and change their lives. Like nothing fires me up more than, you know, consulting and coaching someone and seeing them take action and implement it, right? And get a good outcome. Well, how many people do you know who take your free advice and then actually go and do it? Like hardly any, right? <laughs> like you're doing people a disservice if you're meeting with them for free and having coffee, giving them all your best advice, and then they kind of go, oh, cool, cool, I'll just kind of consider it, whatever, like it was free, so it's not that valuable to me, as opposed to, I'm going to pay you $1,000 for 60 minutes of your time. Do you think if I'm paying you $1,000 for 60 minutes of coaching that I'm going to be engaged, that I'm going to show up on time, that I'm going to take copious notes, and that I'm going to execute and implement everything you tell me to do? Of course I am, right? Like, I just spent a thousand bucks. Like, when people put skin in the game, when they invest in themselves, they are far more likely to take action. They're far more likely to be serious about it. They're far more likely to make this a priority. They're far more likely to implement. And that for you as a coach or consultant, that is what you want, right? And so what you can say to someone in the sales process as a coach or consultant is look like, you know, I win or lose based on client selection. My goal as a coach is not just to take people's money. And my goal as a coach is to see people have real change. I want to see people actually execute and implement and get the outcomes they want or remove the pain that they're suffering from. What I have found as a coach in my experience is the people who have the most success, the clients that really do the best with me are those who are taking it seriously, are those who are like, I'm all in, I'm going to invest in my success, I'm going to make this a priority, and what becomes a priority in people's lives is where their money is, right? Where's your priority? It's what you spend your money on, right? If you spend money on tickets to the ball game tonight, that's your priority. You're not going to be late to the ball game. You're not going to skip it. If you bought front row seats for a concert and paid $2,000 per seat, you're going to be, you know, there an hour early and you're going to make it a big night and everything's focused on having this incredible experience. Whereas if you got free tickets at the last minute to a concert and they were in the nosebleed seats, you might not even go. You might be like, oh, I'm tired. The tickets are free anyway. Who cares? Right? Like that's the difference between free and paying for something. And so what you can do in your sales process is make it clear to the client or the prospect, like, I want people who are serious. Like, I I want you to have a great outcome. And what I find is the people who have great outcomes are the people who put skin in the game and invest in themselves and take this seriously and really want to, to not, here's the line you can use. You can say, I don't want people who are dabbling. I want people who are ready to dominate, right? I don't want someone who's just kind of dabbling and curious and poking around. Like, my time is so limited and I only have so many hours in the day. And because I'm driven by seeing clients get amazing outcomes, I have to make sure the client is the right fit for me, right? That's the other big psychology piece I want to share about sales is don't be desperate. Don't have commission breath, right? (laughs) Don't be, be willing to walk away. Even if you're broke and even if you have no money, it's true that you win or lose based on client selection. So one of the things I've learned that is so, so powerful is in a sales conversation, I will say to the prospect like, okay, well, let me flip the script for a minute. Like, why would you be a great client for us? Like, why would we want to work with you? And then I'll just put it out there. And people usually then react a few different ways. One, they're always caught off guard. Two, it completely flips the balance of power on the call. Here they went from interviewing me, you know, sitting back going, well, I'm going to decide if I'm going to give you any money and let's see if you're good enough, John, to me going, well, I don't even know if I want to work with you, <laughs> right? Like, I don't even know if I want to take your money. Like, I'm not desperate. I'm, I'm not going to just take your money and let you haggle me, right? I'm, I'm going to decide if I even want to work with you. Why would you be a good client? You know, would you be a nightmare? Would you be a red flag client? Would you be a psycho, you know, micromanager, pain in the butt client my whole team hates? Like, because I don't want you then, even if you pay a million dollars, like, the emotional havoc you'll wreak is not worth it, right? So when you flip that script and say to the prospect, you sell me, like, why would I want to work with you? Why should I let you be part of my coaching program, 
Why should I let you have my software? Why should I let you be one of our members? What it does is in the prospect's mind, they go, whoa, what am, I don't want to miss out. Whoa, like they're not, they're not desperate. Like something special might be going on in there. Like, whoa, like they're only picking winners. You know, like you can even say that, like, I want to pick winners. I want to pick A players for clients because listen, my clients who get the best results are A players. They execute, they implement, they invest in the process, they trust us. And, and that's important to us as an agency. We don't want B and C and D players. We don't want dabblers because it won't work. And it's a waste of your time and money as a prospect to do that if you're not all in. And, you know, you will have people go, oh, that's not for me. Great. You just saved yourself a nightmare client. And or you saved yourself a nightmare of haggling your price down because they're not all in. If people are all in, they're going to pay whatever. <laughs> if they see the value, right? That's a whole nother conversation, a whole nother dynamic of how do you frame your pricing and your ROI. But the real lesson here is the psychology of it. It's just being able to say to people like, I'm not desperate. I will choose to work with you as much as you get to choose to work with me. And I think that really helps put you in the driver's seat as it, as you should be. You're the service provider, right? Just like you don't get to go into the doctor's office um, or the dentist's chair without shoes or a shirt, right? <laughs> like they have standards for their clients. Like you don't get to go into the dental office, like, you know, uh, drunk and like shirtless and without shoes, unless you're from Wisconsin and you're a Packers fan, then anything goes baby. <laughs> I knew I could get a cheap shot in at the Packers. Uh, hopefully some of you are listening who are Packer fans. You'll appreciate that. But anyway, I digress. So have high standards and people will react and respond and respect that because people want what they can't have. And, you know, when people feel like, wait, you don't want me, you should want me. Like, I'm great. You'd love to work with me. They will sell themselves on why they should give you money. I've seen it time and again, and it's not mind tricks and reverse psychology. It's just facts. Like they're going to be a better client. They're going to get a better outcome. You're going to be happier and they're going to be happier because they're all in and they're committed to the process, right? You know this if you're in the client service business is the best clients trust you. They do what you tell them. They respond quickly. They engage. They implement what you ask. And typically they get great results, right? So the bad clients are the ones who argue with you, ignore you, ghost you, don't do what you tell them, haggle and nitpick about everything, drive the price down because they're cheapskates and, and they're not really committed to it and they don't believe in themselves and they don't want to invest in themselves. They just want to dabble and see if this works, but they're not committed to making it work, right? Those are nightmare clients. So the, the thing about sales is really you have to come into it with a different mindset. You have to come into it going, I want to legitimately help people in order to help people, I need to know that they meet a certain criteria, correct? Like they need to be committed. They need to be all in. And you have to be serious about that in your lead qualifying process. You shouldn't take on a client that you know you can't help. You shouldn't take on a client just because they're going to give you a bunch of money, but there's a bunch of other red flags, right? <laughs> like you want to have that integrity in your business. Because remember, there are so many prospects. There are so many clients. There is so much money out there. You don't have to be desperate. Don't have that scarcity mindset and that fear-based thing. And also quit viewing sales as like some bad thing. Like your own experience with sales um, doesn't mean you have to act the same way. Right. That's the big thing is, you know, I told this coach that in the Facebook comments was I said, make that make the fact that you hate selling part of your sales pitch. So what I mean is say to a prospect like, you know, whether you're doing an email, whatever, talking to face to face, say make this your sales pitch. Be like, OK, so, you know, we're at the point in the conversation where typically we're going to talk about a program or coaching. Here's my thing. Like, I hate selling. I hate it. It's gross. It, you know, I hate being pitched. I hate being pressured. I hate being, quote, sold to. So I don't want to do that. What I would love to do is just kind of explore this with you a little bit. Uh, you know, you've kind of told me what I need to hear as far as what your challenges are, what your pain points are, what your goals are. You know, now I'm going to outline, you know, I legitimately think I can help you. I le Based on what you're telling me, I legitimately think, you know, my coaching program will help you get these goals. Here's what the program looks like. Here's how we implement it. Here's what we do, right? And here's all the points of the program. And then also, obviously, there's an investment. There's an investment involved to work with me. This isn't me trying to sell you or pressure you. It's just the reality is like I need to be paid for my services and I need to feed my kids too. And honestly, like the value I'm going to bring you if, you know, you implement what I tell you, 
you should be able to achieve these goals that are going to help you get these things. And you've told me, like, again, you set up the process and you say, you say to the prospect, like, what would it mean to you financially if you achieve this goal? Or what would it mean to you financially if you remove this pain? Or if it's not a financial goal, what would it mean for your life if we were able to, you know, get this pain point out of your life? What would it mean for your business if you're able to relieve this obstacle? You know, oh my gosh, I'd have so much more time to do it. Okay, well, what's how valuable is that to you? Then that's the price of the program, right? So, so what you can say to them is like, Hey, like, I don't want to sell. I'm not here to pressure you. Here's the deal. Like, I think I can help you. The way that I help you is through these steps, this coaching program. The investment level for it is XYZ dollars. And, you know, the reason it is that price is what I do is very valuable. You know, what you've already told me, if you can achieve those goals, that should easily help you, you know, 1x, 2x, 3x, 10x your investment, right? That's the other key is make the ROI work for them and say, look, my coaching program is ten thousand dollars but you told me you know if you were able to take away um you know this obstacle it would free up 10 more hours a day for you to grow your business i don't see how you're not going to 10x your ten thousand dollar investment with an extra 70 hours a week to work on your business right like you just make the math work for people make it simple and then you basically say and also what i found is uh if you aren't serious about the process if you're not all in if you're not fired up and if you're not willing to invest in yourself and put skin in the game, my coaching won't be a priority. For a lower price, my coaching is not a priority for you, right? At this price, it's designed to hurt a little bit, <laughs> right? Because it's designed to make you say, this is one of my top priorities. I have to show up for these coaching calls. I have to take notes. I have to implement because I'm spending so much money on it that I have to get a good outcome. As opposed to, well, I'm dabbling in this. I'm just paying a little bit of money. It's no big deal if I show up. It's no big deal if I just don't do anything. The coach doesn't really care. They're making money. You know, that's the difference. And that's the brand you want to have is be like, look, I want, I want A players. I want people that are all in. And I'm choosy about who I work with because I only want to work with you if I think we can get great results. So I interview you as much as you interview me. And I'm not even going to offer you my services if I don't think it's a good fit. Why would I waste your time and your money um, if I didn't think it was a good fit, that's not fair to you, right? And, and people will respect that because you're being authentic and transparent and you will have a lot of people you say no to. But the key is you'll get to the right clients at the right price points so you won't have to have a bunch of low paying, lousy clients who are just dabbling or not doing a good job. That's the difference. So anyway, I go on and on and on about sales, but I knew I had to hit record. It's so interesting to me too, the core lesson I started this podcast with is reading, like read, make that part of your morning routine. Start your day with a book that makes you think, take notes, and it'll spark ideas, it'll spark action, and it'll also spark content. And creating content right now is obviously such a critical thing. Like you need to have content going out so people get to know, like, and trust you so that you demonstrate expertise. Like I'm hoping you can walk away from this podcast and go, wow, there's actually concrete, actionable things I can do now moving forward on my next sales call that John just said, like, I can use some of these questions. I can jot down some notes from this podcast and try out these strategies. Like, that's the idea, right? I'm demonstrating expertise because, oh, by the way, I have sales courses. <laughs> right? So if you want to go deeper, I'll put a link in the show notes to some of my different online sales trainings and online sales courses, both free ones and paid ones, right? So again, I'm doing what I'm, I'm practicing, what I'm preaching. I'm saying, if you're serious and if you want to get really good at sales, I'm going to make available to you some of my online sales courses that go deeper on these topics that have the you know scripts and templates and strategies, training videos, all that stuff. And if you just want to dabble, that's fine too. Like it's, it's no skin off my nose. And that's the other way that you can serve people is you can still put out tons and tons and tons of great free content and you can still bottle up your expertise and share it with the whole world. Don't just share it with one person. That's the other thing of how to scale yourself and your time and your value as a coach, consultant, business owner, entrepreneur is don't just do one-on-one -on -one coffee meetings where you dispense all this wisdom and one person takes it and they may or may not do anything with it. Bottle it up so that the next time someone says, hey, can we have coffee? I want to pick your brain about sales. You say, hey, you know what? I'm so flattered. I'm so honored. I really appreciate that. That, you know, that anyone would even want my advice is awesome. However, right, you know, because I've, I only have so many hours in a day and my time is really committed to my paying coaching clients um, and, you know, all, all my schedules kind of 
built around the people that are paying me. Like I, I don't do free coffees. I don't do lunches. However, I'm not going to leave you empty handed. I have actually bottled up my best tips on sales and selling. Um, and I'll give you that. It's a free video. It's a free podcast. It's a free ebook. Um, and in fact, that's better than having me at a coffee meeting because you might meet me for coffee and I'm having an off day right? <laughs> and I'm not on my A game. But this recording, this bottled up knowledge is my A game. It's all my best stuff. I was on fire that day. It was a live talk I gave. Like you're going to love it. It's going to give you what you wanted out of the conversation, which is value and tips and expertise that you can run with. And then if you want to talk more after that um, and look at, you know, engage me for some coaching let's do that but like this way uh you know just make it a win-win just be like this way too like i'm gonna save you time you don't have to drive across town and have coffee with me waste a couple hours of your day like you can listen to this while you're out walking doing something else you can you know watch it on your own time you don't have to adjust your schedule for me that way it makes it convenient for you and when i do that with people i find that you really weed out the tire kickers and the dabblers because people who really do want to know and learn, they were like, cool, send me the send me the content. I'm going to dive in. And then they come back and they go, yeah, I listened to your audio book or I watched your video. That's amazing. Like, yes, what you said really resonated. How do I go further? Can I buy some of your time? Right. Is there a course that goes with that? Like, that's the magic. Right. And that's how you scale yourself. And that's how you serve more people because you're still serving the tire kickers and the dabblers with your free content, you're bringing them value, but you're not wasting your personal time. You're not driving across town and doing an hour long coffee meeting with someone who may or may not do anything, right? Instead, you're serving, you know, hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of people with online content, bringing all this value and funneling back to you people that are willing to pay you for it. That's the other thing is like, Josh Brown is a great sales trainer says like, you can't create motivation. You can't like put into someone the desire to want your stuff, but you can align with their motivations. So what I mean is if you're a dentist, you can't come to my house and go, you should come in and get your teeth cleaned and do preventative, you know, cavity work. Like for me as a prospect, th that's not a motivation. I don't care about my teeth, right? <laughs> like I'll look like a jack-o'-lantern. I don't care. However, if my tooth hurts and I'm in pain, now I'm motivated to come find you as a dentist. So maybe as a dentist, you go out and you look for people who are in pain and you're marketing and you're, you know, whatever says, hey, are, are you suffering with tooth pain? Do you have a toothache? Uh, are you worried about your teeth falling out? Do you have these fears or pains? If so, come in, let's help you, right? Because that's a segment of your audience. There might be another segment that says, hey, I'm really proactive. I'm type A. I want my teeth to be white and polished and perfect. What's the newest, latest, greatest preventative, you know, dental floss techniques, that's another segment of your audience, right? But you have to align with their motivation. So you've got to figure out with your core audience, what are they motivated? What's their pain? What's their desire? Then align with that, make your services fit that, and they'll come to you. So with all that said, I can keep going. But a better thing is go into the show notes and go deeper into some of my sales content. So I'll put some free links in there to some trainings. I'll link to some of the paid sales courses and dive in. And remember, sales is so fun. And sales is what solves everything for you. You don't have to hate it. If you hate sales, it's because you think sales has to be like all the negative experiences that you have. Like that's the thing is it doesn't have to be like that. Like you don't have to do sales that way. You can do it the way that I'm talking about where it's fun, it's engaging, and it's genuine, it's authentic, it's transparent, and you're legitimately trying to help people and you're doing it for the right reasons and you should be compensated for it. And you don't have to feel guilty or feel bad that by helping someone, they return the favor and give you something of value. Like we don't, as humans, reciprocity says, if you help me, I want to, by human nature, repay the favor, right? So that's what sales is. Like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you achieve something. You're going to want to, out of reciprocity, pay me for that. So there you go. All right. With all that said, thanks so much. Check out the show notes um, for links to some of the sales trainings, and I'll see you soon on another episode. <laughs>